Hello, my name is Cynthia, and welcome to my philosophy channel. I'm happy to be here with you today to share with you my stitching, some things I've crafted and sewn and embroidered, and some plans ahead. It's Thursday, September 22nd, 2022. It's a bright sunny day here in Fort Worth, Texas. And let's go ahead and get started. I have some ears that you might can see poking out from above me here. I have my shoulder pet Gandalf and I'm surrounded by a few previous finishes that I'll start with just to kick things off. It is September, sampler September. And so I wanted to share my favorite sampler that I've sewn so far, the biggest one are stitched. Um, and it's been a while, I show, I've shown this before, but I thought this is my favorite sampler. So let me go ahead and share it again. This is All Creatures Great and Small by Barbara Anna on 40 count mallow. It's just a linen cotton blend, not my favorite fabric to stitch on, but it does look pretty. And I use the anchor called for, except for the red. I changed to 20, anchor 20. That's my um, barn and flower border. Anything that was supposed to be that kind of hot pink that she had in there, I made it red. And I'll show you another project that I used anchor 20 in. That's part of what brought that to mind. I had this antique frame in my stash. I found it at a favorite boutique and it was white. And so I painted it, my Java stain and waxed it and it is on my farm wall. So that is some inspiration. If um, you are working on that, I know lots of people have stitched in and are continuing to stitch it. It's, it's such a beautiful piece. It really turned out nice. So that's my um, All Creatures Great and Small sampler. Some previous fall finishes I wanted to share. I didn't end up showing the Halloween rules at my finish parade um, at the end of the year. Was it December 31st I filmed it, I think? And uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and show it even though I just did it last October. It's been about a year since I've shown it. So I put it on this fence kind of sign that was at my mom's house. It was actually, two pieces. One has my Christmas rolls and the other side has my Halloween rolls. And this was such a fun stitch. It took me most of a year to do. I just would do one a month. I like the arch finish. I think I saw that on Pinterest or it may have been finished that way in the um, model of Lizzie Kate's design because it's obviously stitched that way. But a lot of people finish it flat on top and I really was glad I did the curve. And I have just kind of a pumpkin bow. It's so tall. It's hard to show here with some a wired burlap ribbon and sorry silk and I went ahead and put this on my fireplace today so I thought it'd be fun to show. Not everything showed up quite as well as I hoped but most of it did. I really like the white on this 28 count linen or uh, even weave from Hobby Lobby. So it's a fun one if you're working on it. It's also really pretty as a wall hanging. If I hadn't put it on this board I would have probably done a wall hanging because it's it's a lot. It's a really big piece, as you can see. That's why I didn't end up showing it on my um, finished parade. And I just knocked over my little um, pumpkin head guy. He's sitting back here, too. This was last year's um, craft that I made with these long, long legs. I had him put in, or he sits on my fireplace because he's so tall and skinny. And uh, you can look about him last year, too. Some more details about him if you want to find out more but that was a fun conversion I made from a scarecrow pattern into a pumpkin head guy because I like pumpkin head people. So there are some previous finishes um, from the years past. With that um, I had shown this already last video I made this little squirrel with this I couldn't think of the name of the um, color this bittersweet fabric and the and the black and tan. I went ahead and finished a whip and I didn't show this as something I was going to do but this is kind of how plans work sometimes you just go with it. Um, 
I went ahead and finished kind of a companion piece to this and it's funny because this is a teeny tiny little squirrel and I got some questions about where that came from on Instagram. This was from the cookbook, the Nashville cookbook and I don't know if it was this year or last year because it was um, a friend that I stitched this with. So it wasn't an actual pattern, it was just in the cookbook. So it had like a alcoholic drink and it's a summer piece, but I finished it to look like um, autumn. There's Gandalf's tail. And so I wanted him to have a little acorn to go with, but obviously this squirrel is tiny and this acorn is huge, but I just really think this turned out so pretty. This is a freebie from the work basket on the work baskets website. I started it possibly two years ago. It's been sitting in a little um, Ziploc baggie and I thought, I am not starting another fall small until I finish this one because I really wanted to have it done. I, I probably had like maybe, a, I had the outline of the top. I didn't have any of this. This took a lot of counting. I think it's a really cute pattern if you want to look it up, but I will warn you, I almost had to highlight at first, especially because the um, leaves are just, you know, unstitched negative space and you have to have them perfect because they need to be symmetrical. Same thing with the Quakers. That is the challenge of a Quaker. It's perfectly symmetrical. It's one in one way it's easier because you can check and see immediately that something's wrong. I know I did like this square down one stitch at one point and I looked and thought, oh no. <laughs> so just continually be checking and keeping your symmetry on these Quaker motifs. But I think it's so cute and it's a little bit large um, for a pillow, but I stuffed it with some fiberfill and some walnut shells just to kind of Fiberfill always makes the pillows kind of do that curve out on the edge and it does a little bit, but when you put the walnut shells in there, it's kind of crunchy. They um, make a nice straight line. So I, I liked doing both. That way it's not quite so heavy like a doorstop, but it does have some heft to it. And I couldn't find a ribbon I liked. I was scratching my head. I, I put the twine on there first and didn't really like it and I thought well let me just cut a strip of this fabric because I don't mind that it's unravelly and kind of raw edged and make it into a bow and I couldn't find my bulb pins either I know they're around here somewhere it was one of those things where I was in a hurry and so I just put a regular um safety pin in there but when I find my bulb pins I'll switch them out because they're an antique color not a silver that's just a temporary thing but isn't that cute with the just the fabric if you can't find ribbon cut a thin strip, probably with pinking shears if you wanted to, but mine are a little dull right now. So there is Quaker Acorn by Work Basket, a free pattern, not a bonus, but a free one. Here's another free one I forgot to show. Um, this is one on Pinterest and I can't remember if it's called Pumpkins and Pins. I have a free freebie board that Celeste and I have put together and I'll try to link it down below but I'm pretty sure it's on there in the autumn stitches. I know uh, Ginger Shell did this one too. It's over one stitching and my pumpkins and pins is not perfect but it's good practice and it's just a cute tiny little one that I use some Kansas Troubles quilt charm packs pieces for and some hand dyed corduroy that I made and then I have some pretty uh, ribbon on the side. So these are kind of, I guess the reason I pulled them all together, they kind of sit together, this little trio now. So, you know, I like things in threes. So those were fun to make and I'm glad to have this finish done out of my whip pile. The other thing that's been in my whip pile, not necessarily as a um, finish, um, well, it, it was a finish. I needed to just fully finish it. This embroidery piece I did last year and I hadn't done the um, coloring on it. What I did was just take some crayon and color it in and then you take a piece of, I have a silly cat right now, you take a piece of paper toweling, put it over top and just iron it so it heat sets the crayon. I used like two or three different colors of orange. I just really did a quick color job though. You can probably do something more um, specific with like colored pencils. I know there's lots of tutorials on YouTube. I, I did find one on YouTube just to remind myself because I couldn't remember. How did I, how did I set that again? And it was super simple. It was just um, putting the paper towel over the crayon and then they say that you can wash it. I probably would not unless I had to. Um, but as I was stitching this, I wanted a really quick finish 
It's been kind of a frazzled day today, and so I thought, well, let me just do a pinked edge and do a top stitch. That way, I just put wrong sides together and stitched all the way around. I didn't even have to turn it. It was just super simple. This is a tea towel that I got from um, Hobby Lobby, and I made two pillows out of it. It's just kind of a fun vintage finish, and I'd like to do another one of these. Um, this isn't the most, pro you know, I don't know, professional, so not the right word, but it's not the most um, pleasing stuffing job I've done. It'd be better if I took, um, oh, Gandalf, my cat's just knocked everything down on me. He's been in, he's in a playful mood right now. He's, he's poking me behind as I'm sitting here in my, in my uh, under my bed, so tried to ignore him but he's not letting me um what I was saying though is I should have made a pillow form and then stuffed it in here I even have like an envelope back so or envelope envelope how we don't say that so that I can do that easily and then what I plan to do is um do another set oops upside down another set of this chestnut junction embroidery for Christmas and um do it with the red I think it comes in red black and blue and you've probably seen these kind of tea towels before but one tea towel makes two embroidered pillows so oh here's the other one I had this one already colored and sewn but I um, had not put him into a pillow so here's the two pillows and I have two chairs in my front room and I think they look really cute on there I had done a little bit of fancy stitching on this one it looks like um, some stem stitch and the silly cat and I'd started to do kind of like a textured crosshatch fill in on that sunflower and then I got tired and I was like no I don't want to do that so it just has a little bit in the corner and that crow is cute kind of more of a pastel somehow this one ended up being darker but these are fun just to um you know change out your pillows seasonally they're a little more handmade looking than say a an Amazon form those are cute too I have some of those but if you wanted something a little more handmade this is not a big time investment embroidery goes so much quicker than cross stitching and chestnut junction patterns are $1.99 on her website so both of those came from here this one almost looks a little more halloweeny but i didn't have jack o lantern faces so i thought it could go out for fall so there's those two pillows i made a couple more finishes um this was one i showed last time as a um well let me go ahead and use this do this one in front. This was my favorite finish, but I'll go ahead and show it now. I usually wait for last. This was the Autumn Celebrations from Country Cottage Needleworks, and I showed it last time. I only had about this much done. It's a quick stitch um, on 28 count linen. It was real simple. I did make up my own colors other than I think those tree trunks and pots and um, let's see. No, I think those are the only two called for colors. The rest I used, oh, and 3378 is that dark um, border at the bottom. I used some of Frankie's flosses here. This Wicked Stepmother one is this um, kind of variegated leaves one. It's so fun to use those fall um, flosses that are kind of funky looking, but they work great for a leaf. And I used my Anchor 20 as my favorite red. In fact, I ran out of my Anchor 20 and ended up using for these pieces one that I dyed myself and I was like I really do like that color because it matched I couldn't tell the difference I used my same bow for my summer um, celebrations and just glued this little pumpkin from Dollar Tree on top <laughs> I was feeling kind of lazy I wanted to keep this for summer but I'll just do another bow next summer so that makes two of these complete I do want to do the winter one with a snowflake and I'll do it on probably some blue fabric with uh, white snowflake but this window pane made it kind of different it's a little bit hard to photograph but it shows up really nicely in person and I have it on the same background for the um you know just the ticking from Hobby Lobby and that way oops that way it'll go um the same background every every season Oh, and the, the button on there, I went ahead and splurged. It's only like a dollar something on ABC, or on one, two, three stitch. And um, I got the whole thing finished and photographed. And then I realized I didn't put that button on. It's supposed to be sewn on. But all I did was take a little dot of E6000 and just top it right on that house. Because I was like, I do want that on there. And I do think it adds a little something. There was another one that was um, called for. There's like a leaf that could go here, but I just got the bird. 
So there's Autumn Celebrations. Like I said, it's a 28 count linen called Window Pane. It was a gift from a sweet subscriber. Thank you so much, Pam. And I am glad to have that one in my window. The last one I have back here behind me, I hinted at in my last, or I didn't hint at, I showed in my last uh, video. I wanted to do the finish by um, Priscilla and Chelsea where you just do the stitched O. And I still intend to purchase the um, holidays of this design. I, I didn't need it yet though, because all I ended up doing was getting the um, chipboard letters from Hobby Lobby. They're just like maybe a dollar fifty a piece. And sometimes you can get them on sale. Um, I painted them black. They come in white. I used a vintage um, cloth from Lori Holt that a sweet subscriber gave me several packages of. It looks almost like a burlap. It has some over dyed kind of quality to it. Now, my mom always said when she would watch my video, she would say, Cynthia, don't tell people about your mistakes. You can't really tell. But the reason why I do is because I don't ever want to come across as being perfect or not that I do, but um, I want to be an encouragement of it's okay if things don't quite turn out. Sometimes I just want to quit. You know, when I realize I've made a big oops, I just want to throw it in the trash and think I, I'm not finishing. But you know what? Persevere. It's not that bad. <laughs> I stitched my embroidery on the wrong side of the vintage cloth. So I was so careful with my letters. I was like, okay, make sure you have one side is one side is screen printed with the um, kind of like vintage country mocha is one side was screen printed with the modeling and one side was not. Um, and I accidentally embroidered my O on the wrong side. <laughs> But, you know, from a distance, it is a little bit lighter, but it's not terrible. And this is going to be the one that I switch out. So when I do like my Santa, um, then I'll make sure I have it on the correct side. And I don't know if I can use this vintage cloth for Priscilla and Chelsea's pattern, to be honest, because it's 10 count. And I got to looking at how big those holes are. Um, when I do the Santa and stuff, he might end up being like this big. So I might put a piece of 14 count Ada that I can find as, as close to that color or dye it as close as I can and just um, have it not be the same count. From a distance, I don't I don't think it'll matter because I'm, I'm thinking I'll put this, I have it right now, it's kind of on top of a TV cabinet, so it'll be up high. But it was so fun and I did make this, um, oh, I have to make sure that the magnets, yeah, they do. I did make this with washers so that, um, I can swap it out. So I'm glad I finally got that done. It took some doing. It's it's super simple, but it's a lot of cutting and not my favorite part because um, these are not perfectly square. I used my rotary cutter. I took my time. I tried so hard, but I still didn't get it quite perfect. And I used the Hobby Lobby check that's not um, on point. You know, a lot of people like their gingham to be um, what do you call that when it's on the bias, but um, it's cheaper to do it straight. And I thought it looked fine. So it takes less fabric unless you get, Priscilla's is printed on the bias and hers was a lot more expensive than the Hobby Lobby stuff. So maybe next time I do a project, I'll have a stash of that, but this works fine. And it looks really cute. It has a very nice graphic appeal on top of a cabinet, like from a distance, you can really see it. And it's, it's a really nice, home decor piece. So that was all I had finished for the last couple weeks. I have some works in progress. Most of what I worked on, I showed you my embroidery and my acorn and things that I was just finishing up, but I did put a little bit of time into my Louisa Coolamore and also Feast of Friendship. I'll show you those. And then I have a couple of goals for the end of the year, um, pushing toward a finish so that I can start some new things. I was very um, sparing with my starts this year. And so next year I want to start a sampler a quarter and I'll tell you more about that later on in the year. But let me show you what I worked on and then we'll be done. Thanks. Okay, I think my cats bumped my angle on my camera so it might be a little bit different. But let me show you the work I put in on Feast of Friendship. It's not a ton. Like I said, I mostly focused on what I finished today, but I did put a little more work in on this piece. I was wanting to finish the house and I'm pretty close. 
I put some more um, stitching all the way up here. I added this window. I brought in this side of the roof and started on the pumpkin. I also brought this border around a little bit up top. So that one, I at least want to finish the house and the pumpkin this year. And then next year, all I'll have to do is come in and do the fruit. Or I might keep working on into um, September and November. It definitely feels like more, you know, like Thanksgiving too. So we'll just see if I feel like working on it. I will. It has all these beautiful colors that I really do enjoy. So I hope to get some more work in on that. And then the last one to show you, I was a little bit disappointed in my progress. But here's Louisa Coolamore. It's very slow going. Each letter takes a whole thread in about 20 minutes. So I worked on um, the rest of this alphabet. Last time I showed last time I showed you, oh, watch my needle. I didn't have through to Z and now I do. So that's my first complete alphabet. And I think that's the hardest alphabet that there is. It's the most scrolly, has the most detail. And then there's just a little bit of a doodad here down um, on this side. It's like a little zigzaggy and then we start in on some more alphabets so I'll keep working on that as I can um you have to have good lighting or I have to have good lighting because this linen that I got from Vicki Clayton that was kind of a one-off is super slubby and I have to really watch and make sure I don't go over three because the letters do start to look a little wonky if you get off so it is luckily easy to see when you do but you have to be careful so those two I did put some work in and then for the um, coming next couple weeks I wanted to spend some time on some Halloween pieces I have a, a preschooler Halloween ornament set that I might start but before that I'll probably do these punch needle ornaments here um, I don't have a current punch needle project on the go and I like to have at least one going this came from punch needle primitive stitcher magazine fall 2021 last year I also love this squirrel from Barbara Anna this was a gift from a sweet subscriber Cindy thank you so much I do have like two or three earmarked in here and I do think I'll try to get those ornaments done with punching and then I also have a couple of smalls since I let myself um or since I finished my Quaker acorn I'm going to let myself do a couple more of these little smalls this is the thankful string by Lizzie Kate I know Priscilla changed out that turkey to be a scarecrow but I I think I'll keep the turkey I think it can go up in September and October too it has like acorns and corn and lots of fall motifs so I'm okay with that and then I did go ahead and make working copies of my bell jar I'm working on this one right here I just got the very bottom part of that pedestal done but it's very small and quick and so in fact it's it's in here but I think I'm going to change those colors my pedestal is is more of a brown and then I'm going to do the tree each one has a different tree it took me a while to figure out what that was I thought is that a lemon but it's a tree and so I'm going to use my fall leaves floss to make it variegated and do a fall tree there and then do my sunflowers so hopefully I'll have some time to get that started at least and the way these work a lot of times like my Quaker acorn if you put in you know two-thirds of it or a good 50 60 percent of it it's so much easier to finish it next season so just getting a little bit of time into those is not a waste the other thing i'd like to possibly work on is this sweet ornament from my friend pam she sent three of these and i've always wanted to try one of these um, perforated paper um, mill hill kits and my husband played the trumpet in high school he was in jazz band so i'd like to make that for him for christmas We'll see if I can get that all sorted out and started. And then the other things that I was going to share that I want to finish before the end of the year, two um, bigger samplers. This Hawkorn Hollow I haven't shown in a while um, has almost nine blocks complete. Here's the one I'm working on now. I have to finish a little bit of the lettering and fill in this whole section here. So it's not a small amount of work, but there's a lot done. So I need to keep my eyes on that. And then I'm still continuing to fill in my blocks and I want to start on the next one, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, finish and start. And I don't know if I'll finish this by 20, um, 23, but I would love to, that would be so exciting. So I have that, um, laid out. My friend Becky from Socks for Mom is almost done and we were doing it together. So she's really past me, but that's okay. Um, and the other one, I feel like I have a, 
chance of finishing this. I'm changing the lettering, which is taking me a little bit longer, but I did feel a pullback to my Christmas at Hollyberry Farms. I hadn't shown this part yet. I finished the top. I did make it all the way around and I'm going down now. So those holly berries are intense, but I'm over halfway done now. If I could just keep going down and I have to do it a certain direction. I don't know what it is. Um, the fact that I like to have my stitching going up and the way that I was able to keep them in line. I can only go one direction. So I have to finish that before I can really start putting in those other side elements like the lady and the tree. I always base things off of the border. So that means I have to keep going on that border. It's a little tedious, but the house was the, the hardest part. So I feel like once I get the border done, surely I can finish this year. I want to have it up on my wall. It's so pretty. So those two samplers I really want to finish as well as my 12 days ornaments. I got some charms off of eBay that have the numbers one through 12 with a little, um, oh, like a charm of each uh, verse of the song. So that'll be really fun to finish. And I've kind of stalled out on it. So those are my three things for the end of the year. Hollyberry, Christmas, Hawk Run Hollow, which is a stretch, and then the 12 day ornaments. I really think I can do the Christmas pieces and I'll try to get started on those. Thank you for spending time with me um, today and letting me share all of the things I was able to accomplish. I hope you are having a good September and that you are well and as I end all of my videos in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 17, it says, May the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.